Out of the millions who volunteered to serve their country in the First World War were many ordinary men who acted with extraordinary determination and bravery. William Coltman, VC, Distinguished Conduct Medal and Bar and Military Medal and Bar is one of these people, and this is his tale. William, or Bill Coltman, was born at Rangemore, a village on the outskirts of Burton-upon-Trent, Staffordshire, in 1891. He was the youngest of nine children and worked as a market gardener. He was a member of the Plymouth Brethren Church and taught in the local Sunday school. At age 25, Coltman volunteered for the British Army in January 1915 and served in the 1st 6th Battalion of the North Staffordshire Regiment, the Prince of Wales's. This was a Territorial Force Battalion located in Burton. Coltman was, as an infantryman, issued with a rifle, and he can be seen here on the right in this photograph at only 5 feet 4 inches tall. But Bill never fired a shot in anger. He couldn't, as he was a strict Plymouth Brethren and a devout pacifist, but he was definitely not a conscientious objector. Early on in the field, after spending a night trapped under heavy fire in a shell hole, listening to the cries of wounded soldiers, he vowed never again to shoulder a rifle, and the next morning he submitted a request to retrain as a stretcher bearer. Now, being a stretcher bearer was by no means a cushy option. There were 16 for a battalion of around 1,000 men, and their job was to provide immediate life-saving first aid and then evacuate the wounded from the front line to the regimental aid post. But casualties had to get there first, and in heavy ground each stretcher might need six or eight bearers, and it was not unusual for them to work in teams in relays. It was an advantage that they were dealing with their own battalion, men they had joined up with from the local area, who they might have known from their earlier lives. Of course they had to do this all frequently under fire, and their only protection was afforded by their SB armband, which was worn on their left arm. Bill Coltman applied himself to this back-breaking work and was mentioned in dispatches in 1916 for his work supporting his battalion during the Battle of the Somme. He was awarded the Croix de Guerre by the French Army when he won the military medal, the MM, in February 1917 for rescuing an officer who had been wounded while commanding a wiring party during a misty night. The mist had cleared and the party found themselves under fire. The officer was wounded in the thigh and Coltman immediately went out to bring him in. He won his bar to his military medal, effectively a second military medal, for his conduct four months later in June 1917. He had taken command to limit damage when an ammunition dump had been hit by mortar fire, then bandaged up wounded men when the battalion headquarters were shelled, and finally organised a rescue party to save men trapped in a collapsed trench tunnel. No sooner than he received his second military medal, when a month later he was marked out for recognition with the first award of the Distinguished Conduct Medal, the DCM, for gallantry in July 1917. The citation reads, Conspicuous gallantry and devotion to duty in evacuating wounded from the front line at great personal risk under shell fire. His gallant conduct undoubtedly saved many lives, and he continued throughout the night to search for wounded under shell and machine gun fire and brought several in. His absolute indifference to danger had a most inspiring effect on the rest of his men. Bill Coltman continued serving as a stretcher bearer, and it was in September 1918, during the breakthrough fighting in the Hindenburg Line, that he was recognised for gallantry again. His second award of the DCM was made for his conduct in September 1918, and the citation reads, that on the 27th of September 1918, near the San Quentin Canal, near Belenglise, he dressed and carried many wounded men under heavy artillery fire. During the advance on the following day, he still remained at his work without rest or sleep, attending to the wounded, taking no heed of either shell or machine gun fire, and never resting until he was positive that our sector was clear of wounded. He set the highest example of fearlessness and devotion to duty to those with him. And it was only a week later that he reached the pinnacle of his heroism with the award of the VC. It was just days after his battalion's glorious victory at the San Quentin Canal. In comparison, the follow-up assault on the beauvoir Fonsom line, known as the Battle of Ramicourt, was expected to be easy. 
it was anything but. German infantry put up a surprisingly stubborn line of resistance. Machine gunners had fired at the advancing North Staffords from a series of sunken lanes and individually dug rifle pits, or from well-constructed concrete shelters. Yet the battalion had reached the Borough of Wafonson line, which was effectively a support trench for the Hindenburg line. They had captured all their objectives. But heavy fire was continued to be poured on the attackers by enemy soldiers above them on Mannequin Hill. At risk of being cut off, surrounded by enemy counterattack, officers had no option but to order the men to retreat, and the weight of the enemy fire meant there was no choice but to leave a few scattered wounded behind. Coltman heard from his retreating comrades that wounded men had been left behind, so he set out alone back along the valley in front of Mannequin Hill in search of those unfortunate soldiers. His citation for the VC reads, For most conspicuous bravery, initiative and devotion to duty. During the operations at Mannequin Hill, northeast of Sechart, on the 3rd and 4th of October 1918, Lance Corporal Coltman, a stretcher bearer, hearing that wounded had been left behind during a retirement, went forward alone in the face of fierce enfilade fire, found the casualties, dressed them and on three successive occasions carried comrades on his back to safety thus saving their lives. This very gallant NCO tended the wounded unceasingly for 48 hours. Coltman was invested with his Victoria Cross by King George V at Buckingham Palace on the 22nd of May 1919. After his investiture, he found out that there was a welcome party at Burton train station for him, so he got off a stop earlier to avoid the fuss and walked the last 20 miles home. After the war, Coltman returned to Burton and took a job as a gardener with the town's parks department. During the Second World War, he was commissioned into the Army Cadet Force, the ACF, in 1943 and commanded the Burton Detachment. He resigned his ACF commission in 1951. Bill retired in 1963 and died at Outwards Hospital, Burton, in 1974 at the age of 82. He's buried in the churchyard of St Mark's Parish in Winchill with his wife, Eleanor May. If you have enjoyed this presentation, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and look out for the next in what will be a regular series of less well-known tales from conflict in the 20th century.